Hello and welcome back to Joe's Art History Bite Size, small manageable podcast episodes which sees me, Joe McLaughlin, your resident host and art historian deep dive into a specific artwork or artist in under 10 minutes or less. This week we're looking at an incredible painting entitled The Druids Bringing in the Mistletoe, which was painted by not one but two artists, George Henry and Edward Atkinson Hornell in 1890. And they were two cutting edge Glasgow boys. Let's get started. Okay, before we jump into this artwork, cards completely on the table here. This is one of my all time favorite works of art, not just by the group known as the Glasgow Boys, who were a revolutionary group of painters from Glasgow, which is where I was born and grew up and studied art history. But from the within the canon of art history in its entirety, I think it's such a beautiful painting. It's obscure in the fact that it was painted by two painters, but it's so exceptionally beautiful and detailed. And it hides something really rather dark with what's happening within it. And I actually, I came across the painting completely by chance. When I was a student, I was volunteering with the Association of Art Historians. They had a conference, which they do every year. And this year it was in Glasgow and I helped with the sort of IT equipment. And I sat in on a lecture on Celtic art and the Celtic revival scene in Scotland. And the whole talk was based more or less around, well, the crux of it anyway, was based around the Druids bringing in the mistletoe. I couldn't believe that the work is actually in Kelvin Grove Art Gallery, which from where I was studying was about a seven minute walk. And for some reason, I just hadn't seen it before. And I would highly recommend that you Google very quickly what this artwork looks like before we dive in to the painting. It's so beautiful and I promise you, you will not regret it. And I would highly recommend if you find yourself in Glasgow, do make a trip to the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery. They have a fabulous selection of Scottish arts and crafts, but more importantly, they've got an incredible selection of paintings by the Glasgow Boys. And this is one of the star pieces in the collection. Now, who were the Glasgow Boys? The Glasgow Boys were a revolutionary collective of 20 artists who came together in the 1880s as a rebellion against the more traditional and conservative art scene at Britain at the time. More importantly, it was an active rejection of the values that were held within the city's rival, Edinburgh. Now, even to this day, Glasgow and Edinburgh, it's got a, they're two very, very different cities. In Scotland, we say they're very different ends of the M8. The M8 is our motorway. They're very different cities. And Glasgow has its own art scene and Edinburgh has its own art scene. And it's very much the same to this day. But the Glasgow boys were actively rebelling against this. The Edinburgh art scene, which favoured classical landscapes and portraiture. And as I've said, is always a city that was pitted against Glasgow as the superior and the place which housed the greater artistic scene in Scotland. And that, as I've said, is still up for debate to this day. Why the Glasgow Boys are so important within the history of not just Scottish art history, but within the history of art, is that they actively broke free from the confines of the respected Victorian art scene, which was very well to do, very landscapey, nothing too controversial. And they jazzed it up a bit. They preferred a looser brush technique, bold application of colour and enjoyed working in the natural world. Now, as I said, the work is by George Henry and Edward Atkinson's Hornell, Henry and Hornell. And what's first unusual about the painting is that despite it being painted by two artists, it's rather impossible to tell which part of the canvas was painted by which. Now, this wasn't customary at the time for artists to paint together, although Henry and Hornell did collaborate on other paintings throughout their career. For this painting, the two of them are said to have worked alongside each other to achieve ultimate harmony within the work. And you can see that when you look at this piece. The painting depicts a druid procession after taking part in the holy ceremony of cutting down mistletoe from the sacred oak tree. Mistletoe was a divine plant to the druids for its healing purposes and its fertility purposes, which were particularly effective under the summer's waxing moon. Seen in full to the right-hand side of the painting, the moon's sphere is echoed in the curvature of the hills on which the druids within this work descend. 
The colour application is bold and free throughout the work, which emphasises the magnificence of the Druid's apparel and stance as they proceed down the hillside. Now, for those of you that can't get to a computer or Google this work, it's a beautiful hillside procession of Druids. And they're in their ceremonial garbs. There's two bulls to the front left-hand side. And they're under a summer's moon. They're proceeding down this hillside, which almost looks snowy in the handling and application of it. And they're off to perform a religious ceremony. The colours are bold, they're vivid. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. If you can't Google it now, please Google it later. So colour application, as I said, is bold and free throughout the work, which emphasises the magnificence of the Druid's apparel and stands as they proceed down the hillside. Movement is further emphasised by the positioning of the figures as they almost feel as though they're about to march out of the frame and continue their ceremony. The bold use of colours, shapes and decorative patterns of the robes are a key factor to the work's appeal, from the vibrant reds of the druid's cloaks to the gold detailing of the sacred ceremonial items which different druids hold throughout the procession line. All of these things work collectively to draw the viewer deeper into the work and allow the composition to come together beautifully. But what the details mask, however, is a rather more darker reality to what the ceremony is about. Now, the head druid, who's at the foreground of the painting, who's right at the front of the painting, holds a golden sickle, which has been used to cut down the mistletoe. As I've mentioned previously, mistletoe for druids is an exceptionally important plant for lots of different ceremonial reasons. And the head druid, who's at the front holding this golden sickle, is leading the procession to their place of worship to offer the two white bulls, which are positioned to the left of the head druid, as sacred sacrifices. And the bull's horns is where you see the mistletoe. They're interwoven within the horns of these two great white beasts who are being marched to their death. When the work was first displayed at the Grosvenor Art Gallery in London in 1890, it caused such a surge in interest and discussion that the organiser of the Munich Art Exhibition, Gustav Paolo, asked for the work and others by the Glasgow Boys who were on display there to be sent to Munich to be shown there. When the works were exhibited in Munich, this painting took Europe by storm, as others had not seen a painting style so radical in its use of colour and particularly its use of gold. Moreover, the showing of this work and several others by the Glasgow Boys put the group's name on the map and put Glasgow as a city as one to be watched and one to be celebrated. This recognition and acceptance of the style set the trailblazing for other Scottish artists, such as the Scottish Colourists, who were another fabulous group of artists that followed on from the Glasgow Boys, and another very famous man who was working at this time in Glasgow as an architect, Charles Rennie Mackintosh, who actually, because of the Glasgow Boys' ability to put Scotland on the map, found it much easier to find acceptance abroad with his own artistic style and developments. A final interesting fact about this work is that the frame that it sits within was designed by the artists themselves. And the frame is this beautiful, intricate, Celtic, knotted designs. It's gold. And at the top of the frame is a gold sickle, which echoes that of the one that the head druid holds within the painting. The work itself has been subject of massive debates of hidden messages and meanings, and it can be found on permanent display at the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum in Glasgow, Scotland. You have been listening to Joe's Art History Podcast Bite Size, small, manageable episodes which sees me, Joe McLaughlin, your resident host and art historian, deep dive into a specific artwork or artist in 10 minutes or less. If you have enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, rate and subscribe as it helps other listeners find us. If you want to support the podcast, why not leave us a review or tell someone you know who may enjoy listening all about it. If you would like to support the future of the podcast, please consider purchasing and gifting me a book from my Amazon wish list included in the show notes below. If you would like to get in touch, please feel free to do so. It'd be lovely to hear from you. You can email me 
joesarthistory at gmail.com or you can find me via Instagram which is at joesarthistory or you can search for my name Jo McLaughlin and you'll find me that way too. Finally I've been your host and your resident art historian Jo McLaughlin and thank you so much for listening. Keep learning and remember art is for all even in bite-sized editions. See you next time. Bye.